Learning to Swim by Kyoko Mori, illustrated by Kazuhiko Sano. Genre: An autobiography is a story about a person's life told by that person. As you read, think about the clues that identify this as a true story that the author has written about herself. Question of the week: Why is it important? I was determined to swim at least 25 meters in the front crawl. As we did every summer, my mother, younger brother, and I were going to stay with my grandparents, who lived in a small farming village near Himeji in Japan. From their house, it was a short walk through some rice paddies to the river where my mother had taught me how to swim when I was six. First, she showed me how to float with my face in the water, stretching my arms out in front of me and lying very still, so my whole body was like a long plastic raft full of air. If you thought about it that way, my mother said, floating was as easy as just standing around or lying down to sleep. Once I got comfortable with floating, she taught me to kick my legs and paddle my arms so I could move forward, dog paddling with my face out of the water. Now I was too old to dog paddle like a little kid. My mother had tried to teach me the front crawl the previous summer. I knew what I was supposed to do: flutter, kick, and push the water from front to back with my arms while keeping my face in the water and turning sideways to breathe. But somehow there seemed to be too much I had to remember all at once. I forgot to turn my head and found myself dog paddling again after only a few strokes. This summer I thought I would work harder and learn to. This summer I thought I would work harder and learn to swim as smoothly and gracefully as my mother. Then I would go back to school in September and surprise my classmates and my teachers. At our monthly swimming test, I would swim the whole length of our pool and prove myself one of the better swimmers in our class. At our school, where we had monthly tests to determine how far each of us could swim without stopping, everyone could tell who the best and the worst swimmers were by looking at our white cloth swimming caps. For every five or ten meters we could swim, our mothers sewed a red or black line on the front of the cap. At the last test we had in late May, I had made it all the way across the width of the pool in an awkward combination of dog paddle and front crawl, earning the three red lines on my cap for 15 meters. That meant I was an average swimmer, not bad, not great. At the next test in September. I would have to try the length of the pool, heading toward the deep end. If I made it all the way across, I would earn five red lines for 25 meters. There were several kids in our class who had done that, but only one of them had turned around after touching the wall and swum farther, heading back toward the shallow end. He stopped halfway across, where the water was up to our chests. If he had gone all the way back, he would have earned five black lines, meaning fifty meters and more. That was the highest mark. All the kids who could swim the length of the pool were boys. They were the same boys I competed with every winter during our weekly race from the cemetery on the hill to our schoolyard. They were always in the first pack of runners to come back, as I was. I could beat most of them in the last dash across the schoolyard because I was a good sprinter. But in the pool, they easily swam past me and went farther. I was determined to change that. There was no reason that I should spend my summers dog paddling in the shallow end of the pool while these boys glided toward the deep end, their legs cutting through the water like scissors. My brother and I got out of school during the first week of July and were at my grandparents' house by July seventh, the festival of the stars. On that night, if the sky was clear, the weaver lady and the cowherd boy would be allowed to cross the river of heaven, the Milky Way, for their once-a-year meeting. The weaver lady and the cowherd boy were two stars who had been ordered to live on opposite shores of the river of heaven as punishment for neglecting their work when they were together.
On the night of the seventh, it was customary to write wishes on pieces of colored paper and tie them to pieces of bamboo. On the night of their happy meeting, the weaver lady and the cowherd boy would be in a generous mood and grant the wishes. I wished, among other things, that I would be able to swim the length of the pool in September. Of course I knew, as my mother reminded me, that no wish would come true unless I worked hard. Every afternoon my mother and I walked down to the river in our matching navy blue swimsuits. We swam near the bend of the river where the current slowed. The water came up to my chest, and I could see schools of minnows swimming past my knees and darting in and out among the rocks on the bottom. First I practiced the front crawl, and then a new stroke my mother was teaching me, the breast stroke. A good thing about this stroke, she said, is that you come up for air looking straight ahead so you can see where you are going. We both laughed, practicing the front crawl in the river. Where there were no black lines at the bottom, I had been weaving wildly from right and left, adding extra distance. As we sat together on the river bank, my mother drew diagrams in the sand, showing me what my arms and legs should be doing. Then we lay down on the warm sand so I could practice the motions. Pretend that you are a frog, she said. Bend your knees and then kick back. Flick your ankles. Good. We got into the water where I tried to make the motions I had practiced on the sand, and my mother swam underwater next to me to see what I was doing. It was always harder to coordinate my legs and arms in the water, but slowly all the details that seemed so confusing at first came together, so I didn't have to think about them separately. My mother was a good teacher. Patient and humorous, she talked me out of my frustrations even when... I felt sure I would never get better. By mid-August, in both the front crawl and the breaststroke, I could swim easily downstream, all the way to the rock that marked the end of the swimming area. My mother thought that the distance had to be at least 50 meters. When I reached the rock, I would turn around and swim against the current. It was harder going that way. I had to stop several times and rest, panting a little, but swimming in a pool where the water was still, I was sure I could easily go on for 25 meters. That summer, during the third week of August, two of my uncles, their wives, and my mother decided to take a trip to the Sea of Japan for the weekend, bringing my brother, our cousins, and me. All of us kids were excited about going to the sea coast. It was on the less populated side of our country, which faced China, Korea, Russia, and other faraway northern places. I had never been to that sea, though the river we swam in ended there. When my mother warned me not to swim past the rock that marked off the swimming area, because the current got strong, she said, we don't want you carried past Ikaba, all the way to the Sea of Japan. Ikaba, a village to the north, got its name, which meant 50 waves, because the river was so turbulent and wavy there. I imagined the water tumbling down rocky mountains from Ikaba to the faraway sea. The next morning after breakfast, we dressed in our swimsuits and walked to the beach, which was just down the road from the inn. On a narrow strip of white sand, a few families were clustered around bright red, blue, and pink beach towels. Some people were already in the water. Even a long way out, the water came only to their waists or chests. Big waves were hitting the rocks on a piece of land that jutted out to the sea to our left. While my uncles and aunts and their kids spread out their beach towels on the sand, my mother and I walked to the water's edge, leaving my brother behind with my cousins. I had never swum in the sea before, but I had seen pictures in my geography book of people floating on the Dead Sea. The writing underneath said that the salt in the water made it easier for people to float. The sea was cold as my mother and I walked in, much colder than the pool or the river, but it was a hot, sunny morning. I knew I would get used to it soon. We went in and splashed around for a while. Then I started practicing my front crawl. 